Hello, and in this video, we're going to put some holes in the top of our box, add some rods, what we're going to call follow rods, and mate them with the uh, cams beneath them so they move up and down as we rotate this rod here in the middle. Uh, so this is what's called an automata box for grading. Uh, so let's start off by put, putting those holes in the top of the box. Uh, we're going to do that in the context of this box we're already looking at. So I'm just going to right click on uh, this blue top here and we want to uh, edit in context so if we look at these options down here in the middle towards the bottom uh, edit in context is what we want to do uh, then we can turn this box any which way i'm going to turn it over and turn it to the top maybe if i do it the right way it's going to be a little easier uh, but we want to turn it so that we're looking directly at that top and then i'm going to lay it down flat so we can see that top uh, to do it all we have to do is start a sketch like we do on the part by itself and then click on that top so we have a place to sketch and we're just going to make circles we want these circles just slightly larger than our rods right now we have a 0.25 as our default for our rods and we'll keep it that way so i'm just going to make two circles uh, one here and one over here and we'll dimension it to make them in the right location here in a sec first we want to make the circles the right size so i'm just going to click on it and dimension it and make it 0.28 so it's just slightly larger than our uh, rods we have. Same thing with this 1.28. That way we have a clearance fit is what we're looking for. Uh, then we need to dimension it from the side. So make sure you get the center dot, not the outside edge. I'm going from the center dot to the outside edge. That back edge, I'm going to make two to put it right in the center. Same thing on the other circle. Outside, center dot to the outside edge, 2.0. Then we need to locate them based on where our uh, cams are beneath. So if we go the opposite direction, you can see our cams beneath. And we want to line it up so it's directly above those cams so that when the rods go down, they're directly in line with those. Uh, so I'm going to start with uh, this one on the right-hand side. I'm already on dimension, so I'm going to hit that circle center of it and then go to the outside edge. And it should be about one. I'm going to put one. I know it's not going to be exactly one, but I'm going to put one for now. And that moves our dot over. So it should move our dot over. You can see it's kind of lined up. It's a little bit off because of it's lined up on the edge. I want it lined up in the center. We know these cams have a diameter of 0.25. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to edit this one and change it to 1.25. So I'm actually just going to undo to make it easier and reset this as 1.125. So I click on it, type in 1.125. And that should place us directly in the center of that cam. And now you can see that line coming right through the center. Uh, same process we're gonna do on this other side. So again, I'm in my dimension tool. I go from the center of the circle to the outside edge. Uh, I'm gonna bring it all the way down so it's not my way and we want it lined up right in the middle you can see right now we're almost at two and it's almost at that far edge it means two would be at that far edge this time we want to subtract so we want to subtract half of that 0.25 or 0.125 so we should end up with 1.875 hit enter and now we can see it's lined up it's right there in the center so since we're in that context it lets us see we're right in the center of those uh, once we're done with that we can hit our green check and we can extrude. Uh, the circle is a little hard to see, but we can still extrude and cut them. Uh, we want to cut them out, so we want to make sure we're using the remove tool here, not adding one new. We want to remove. Click inside each of the circles. It's going one through, that's fine. You can change it to through all if you want to make sure it's going through all, uh, but we know it's less than one total. So then we hit our green check, and it puts our holes in that top. Now we can go back to our assembly and we can add in our rods. So I'm just going to go back to my home with an isometric view and we can add in some rods. So we're going to put some rods into those holes we just created. So at first I need the rods, so I'm going to insert and I'm going to just put two rods on my page. Well, you put them doesn't matter, we'll, we'll constrain them into place here in a second. So I got one rod and then I got a second rod. Once you're done, you can hit the green check, we're done inserting. Next, we want to change the length of these rods. Right now, the six inches, that's a bit long for where we're placing them. So all I'm going to do is right click on it. And down here in the middle, uh, you can see change configuration. That's what we want to do. And then all we have to do is change that six. In this case, I'm going to change it 
to a4 and hit enter. And that changes this first round to be four inches. Then I'm going to do the same process on the second round, only I'm going to make it five inches. So I'm going to change that one to five. Same thing, hit my green check, and it changes to five. Now we need to constrain them into the holes. We're going to use what's called a slider mate to do that. So all you have to do is click your slider mate, click the end of your rod, and then click make sure you're on the hole and you click on that hole. Once you're there, you hit the green check, and what that does is it allows the rod to move up and down in that hole. So I'm going to move it so it's just barely going into that hole right now. And that's just to help set up for our next step. Same process on the second rod. Again, slide in mate. Click the end of your rod and click on the hole. That puts your rod in the hole. Hit the green check. In this case, you can't see it very well because of the way it's located but we can drag it up and down again so it's easy to see again i'm going to drag it so it's just barely going in the hole it's just so it's barely in the hole and that's just to help set up for our next step now that we have them in the hole we want to constrain them to the cams on here so that as it rotates it moves with that cam so i'm going to just oh, a little too far i'm just going down to this view so it's easy to see them now we want to do what's called a tangent mate uh, this is when two surfaces are just going to touch. So I'm going to zoom in just so it's easier for you to see. So I'm zooming in, zoom the window, and I'm just going to zoom in on this uh, eccentric cam in power. So we just hit tangent mate. I hit the bottom of my rod, and then the side of my cam. And that constrains it to that side of that cam. Hit my green check, and then it's going to move as I rotate my rod. Once we do the second one, we'll show you that rotation and how it moves up and down with it. Then I want to do the same thing on my other cam. So i got to rotate my view uh, just so I can see those. And same thing, I'm going to do a tangent mate. Again, I'm going to zoom the window just so it's easier to see. And I'm going to zoom in on that section. Bottom of the rod, and then the side of my cam. Once I do that, I hit the green check, and then I'm just going to go to my home view, and we'll watch it as it rotates. So right now, all I'm going to do is go to this revolve mate we did last time, and I'm going to right click, and I'm going to animate it. Uh, right now, it's just going to do one circle. I'll do it once with one circle, and then do another time with a second circle. So you can watch, and you can see this one's moving up and down. This one on the pair cam, you can see it's most of the time it stays stable and then it has one real quick jump up uh, so I'll let it go two rotations this time just up in this to 720 degrees and again hit my green check so you can see the one rotates and the one just does a quick pop-up uh, so that's what we're looking for on uh, constraining your power rods to your cams on what's called an automata box uh, in this video, we did an eccentric cam and a pair cam. Next time, we'll look at the yeah, other two types of uh, camps and how you can get those uh, constrained in place. Hopefully, this helps you in setting up your automata box. Uh, next time, we'll do the other two cams, and we'll look at changing the size and how that affects your motion as well. Uh, thank you, and good luck.